Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, spent five hours on Capitol Hill today talking about Russia and its alleged influence on Donald Trump's presidential campaign. But that's not the only big story that involves Russia and the Attorney General. Yesterday, Sessions announced in a letter that he has directed the Department of Justice to take a closer look at the Obama-era Uranium One deal, something we've covered a lot on this show. In that letter, the attorney general signaled he was open to appointing a special counsel to investigate that deal and any involvement by Hillary Clinton. Richard Goodstein is a lawyer. He's advised both of Hillary Clinton's presidential campaigns, and he joins us tonight. Richard, thanks for coming on. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. So I want to start on a totally apolitical note, just citizen Please. to citizen, American to American. Does it bother you at all that the Obama administration allowed Russia, given all you now believe about Russia, access to a pretty large percentage of our uranium reserves? No. Let me tell, give you three facts as to why not. First, uranium is not a dear commodity. The price has come down by three quarters over the past 10 years. Kazakhstan is the biggest source of, of uranium on the planet. Russia's basically got good control over that. Russia has its own uranium, okay? And the uranium that uh, Russia ended up controlling, thanks to Uranium One, which, incidentally, Hillary Clinton had zero role in, um, to the extent that it went out of the country at all, and most of it won't, it went to Canada, got reprocessed, and then came back to the U.S. So, no, right. Well, so, so wait, but hold on. Wait, that's a, just as a factual matter. Some of it went beyond Canada and went to Europe, and where it went, then we Piddly don't know. And it left without an. It but left again, without an export suggestion. License. But yeah, hold on, wait. But I'm a little confused, and we'll get to Hillary in just a second. But I'm a little confused, given that you've come on the show so many times to say that Russia is our primary adversary on the global stage, that they Correct. seek to undermine the U.S. government, that we're at war with them, that you would be comfortable with giving them control of some of our uranium. What would be the strategic benefit to the United States in doing that? Why would we do that? So again, if there's a commodity that's come down by three quarters in price over the past 10 years, that tells you it's not a very dear commodity. So what you're suggesting is the person who owns that land out in Wyoming or wherever should be made to sit on it rather than capitalizing on no. it. I, no, well, I'm saying that if you believe that Russia is a threat to the United States, you probably wouldn't want to give them control over it. And if that uranium was meaningless, then answer this if you would. Why did the Clinton Foundation encourage Uranium One to hire the Podesta group to lobby the Clinton State Department for this deal approval? If it was not a big deal, why would they go to the trouble of hiring the brother of Hillary's campaign manager to lobby for the deal? I'm confused. Yeah, you'll have to ask them. I have no idea. Because of the fact that Hillary Clinton had no role herself, and because under CFIUS, the Committee for the Foreign Investment in the United States, yes, I know what there's it is. nine agencies, right? The Treasury is the lead agency in these CFIUS deals. True. State is one right. of nine. And again, it never yeah. reached Hillary's desk. So you have to ask but I them wonder why, why they... Wait, but hold on. No, but I'm, I'm a little bit confused because we know from the last campaign that Hillary Clinton was the most successful and best informed secretary of state in the history of this republic. Given that, that's true. Why wouldn't she be involved in the transfer of ownership of an essential natural resource like uranium to our primary geopolitical adversary? It, why wouldn't she be involved in the details of that? What was again, she doing? Yeah. It seems negligent. No, I'm Tucker, serious. It, it, the premise that it's this essential national resource. It's used mainly anymore in nuclear power plants, which incidentally are not economic thanks to the low price of natural gas. So it's, okay. you know, but that's the but, problem with this. But this if theory. that was so about hold on. But wait a second. If that's true, then why was the Russian government so anxious to get this done that they hired the Podesta group in order to lobby Hillary? I'm, what do you know that they didn't know? That, no. Why would they spend that money trying to lobby her if she, it was not a big deal and she had no role? We, we know that the Russian economy is in the tank, right? It's it's what smaller right. than. Italy or something like that or some states. In the I US. thought they were a huge threat to us. I'm confused. My point is we don't exactly look to the Russia to make smart economic decisions. So whoever they hired to oh. do this, you have to ask them. Honestly, it doesn't make any They're sense. They're irrational. But it, but it does. Wait, but hold on. Look, and I, there are a lot of questions to which I don't know the answer. I'm not going to pretend that I do. I, I don't have the full storyline here. But typically in Washington, where you live and you know it well, when people hire a lobbyist to lobby someone, they're spending their own money to do that. Yeah. They're expecting something in 
return. You're saying right. it was totally accidental, it was irrational, no, Hillary for some reason didn't have anything to do. Oh, okay. I, then why would they accidental. hire the Podesta Look, group to the, do the that? The CFIUS process is a complicated process. Any entity that wants to go through it needs to actually have its ducks in a row. And whether it's the Podesta group or any other, their law firms throughout the city that make big money at helping companies get through CFIUS, okay? So in this case, it was Podesta. The next day, it will be somebody else. It's just not that big a deal. And again, the core issue is that uranium is just not that treasured. It's not that, that big a deal. Would you recommend handing over more of our uranium supplies to the Russian government? Do you think? I, I, would you feel comfortable if the well, Trump all, administration signed off over, on a deal like this? Well, we're, no, we're, not, we're, allow, we're allowing, we're allowing, we're allowing the country that's seeking our destruction to have control of some of our uranium. Yeah. Would you recommend the Trump administration pursue that same policy? Is that a wise policy? Do you the think? The amount of uranium, you know. It would be no, a it's problem. a simple question. It would, would you well, be happy if the question. Trump people did that? It, it would be a problem <laughs> to relinquish uranium if we started building uh -huh. tons of nuclear power plants. But with our demand for right. nuclear weapons, it's not. And that's the fantasy underlying oh. this that, that the Is people that the who are fanning this want to have people uranium? believe. Really? I, mean, I wonder. I mean... I can't really tell. In, on some topics, you seem to think Russia is a disorganized, impoverished state that poses no threat to us. And in others, they're a supervillain that, quote, hacked our election. So the which only is thing it it's exactly? got going for it is its villainy, right? That's the only oh, thing. Its economy okay. is not strong. But the fact of the matter is, again, Kazakhstan <laughs> has 39% of the world's uranium. That's mm. where Russia's neighbor, right? They, Russians okay. have control over that. <laughs> they don't really need to come here to, like, steal our right, precious yeah. resource. But, but for some reason, than they did. I wonder why. Richard, well, thank you for joining us. That's My fascinating. Pleasure.